the apple. What? Thanks for making me traumatized, Raka Raka. Talk to Me is a 2023 horror film that was submitted on Sundance Film Festival and been bought by A24. It was released in theaters on July 28, 2023 and grossed over $92 million. 48 million domestically and 43 million internationally. And just like when I was traumatized of all the gore and horror as a kid, this film once again had me the same experience. But first, I gotta have three points throughout the video, such as the film's origin story, the plot, and my overall thoughts. Without the way, let's talk about the film's origin story. It all started with a story of Danny Philippou's traumatic experience. He shared the story with a person named Roger Ebert. Quote, I was in this car accident when I was 16. I'd split my face open, and they thought I might have broken my spine. I was in the hospital, and I couldn't stop myself from shaking. And the doctors would come in, turn the heaters on, and give me extra blankets to try to warm me up, but they couldn't get me warm. I just couldn't stop shaking. And then, my sister sat next to me. She held my hand, and the shaking just stopped. The touch of someone I love brought me out of this state of shock that I was in. The movie production was supposed to be an eight-week production. However, it didn't last long because the budget was cut and reduced to five weeks production of shoots. The final budget was over for $0.5 million, and the distribution company, Causeway Films, submitted the film and was accepted by the Sundance Film Festival. I don't want to tell the rest because there's the rest of the story from the Rakarak video, called, We Made a Horror Film. Now, let's move on to the next point of this video. Let's begin the plot, shall we? It opens up with a person named Cole walking through the house to find his brother. He finds him and convinces people to stop filming before eventually getting stabbed. And then Duckett goes outside and eventually stabs himself in the eye. We were cut to 17-year-old Mia at the second year anniversary of her mother's death. She believed to suffer from accidental overdose. She lives with her father, named Max, and she doesn't talk to him much instead with her best friend, named Jade, and her young brother, named Riley. One evening, Mia picked up Riley from his hangout. They hit a kangaroo, and it's moaning in agony. She attempts to drive the kangaroo's head, but unable to do so. Jade convinced Mia to join the party, mainly because Jade's boyfriend will be there. The party is hosted by Joss and Haley. Everyone was gathered as they took out the hand, full of handwriting scribbled on it. The purpose is to hold so spirits may be conjured. Mia volunteered and instructed. She saw an elder spirit and entered the body. The spirit threatens the room before the hand was pulled out. There's a montage, which I actually enjoyed. The music syncs with the person clapping. One moment where Daniel is possessed and unexpectedly kissed Riley's dog, which is disgusting, in my opinion. Riley was then asked to go next, despite him being young. After his possession, the spirit is actually Mia's mother, Rhea. They both talked and Rhea tells Mia that she misses her. However, it didn't last long. Jesus Christ! How Danny and Michael managed to do that, it makes me want to vomit so badly. When Mia tried to visit, her friends looked away for what she did. She spent more time with her crutch, Daniel. They slept over one night, and Mia sees a spirit, sucking Daniel's toe. After she woke up, she's the one who've done it. Mia came up with an idea to finish the game by blowing out the candle. She tries to repossess Riley. Instead, it's a spirit of a little girl who shows that Riley has been tormented by many spirits. After Mia went back home, Max revealed to Mia that the mother's death wasn't accidental, but rather, suicide. 
When she's crying in her room, her mother's spirit appears to claim the note as a lie. Max would then appear at the door, and it actually made me both terrified and amazed. <gasps> But oh no, it's in another hallucination. <laughs> Back at the hospital, Mia and Sue had a conversation, and Sue said that she's never the cause of what happened to Riley, and she lets Mia be alone with Riley, only to realize it's a trick. It's gonna be, ah. Uh, kills Riley, B. Mia kills herself, or C. Jade kills Mia and saved Riley's life. We were shown that Riley got a happily ever after, while Mia didn't, and became a part of the game. La re. Pesto. I'll let you win. So, what are my thoughts of Talk to Me? Honestly, this is the best horror film since Smile. Danny and Michael did a really good job on the film, from the characters, to the story, to the emotions, and so on. I'm gonna head into some fun facts about the film. Firstly, one of the brothers made a cameo in the film, and it's in the opening scene. You can see him right there. Secondly, one of Raka Raka's cousin was in the film. It's also in the opening scene. He was Dude, only given a few lines. Mate, I'm this close to calling the cops. Dude, what the hell? Oh. Are you gonna break my mom's door? No. Thirdly, the film had six hands, in case anything happens either broken or damaged. Fourthly, the film was released alongside Haunted Mansion. I'm sure what happened over there. Do I recommend checking it out? Well, yes, if you're a horror fan. If you're not, don't watch it if you're not a fan of gore and horror. So yeah, this is my review on it to force talk to me. Make sure that you liked and subscribed, and turn on notifications to see my next upload. Have a good day everyone, take care.